to California, seen the sights and people there. Okay, good show, Grace and Michael here, and it's my turn to go in the hopper, so the proof of the pudding here will be in the eating. So on the first photo here, we have a blue hour shot. This was actually on our way to Bernie Falls. And as we were coming over the mountain before dawn and uh, on our way to Bernie Falls, this was from a overview of a vista point. Now, when we stopped, I liked the fact that we had some foreground framing here, and we can see that we have some deciduous trees on the lower left and some evergreens in the middle as well as on the right hand side and here we have nature in the front juxtaposed by steam rising from the work of the city in the middle ground and better yet notice the layers on this photo so we have one in the front um, a second there in the flat ground then we have two layers of colors here as we're going up vertically and then we have some um, orange kind of coming up to the golden hour and then kind of a fade off into the blue. So these usually make nice photos when we have a lot of different layers. It makes the shot more interesting than just the same color, texture, shape, lines that are going all across the screen. So taking a look at the crop of the photo, let's kind of look at it from Lightroom's perspective. And if we go into the R tool is a shortcut way we can use the letter R. And we can see that I have done some cropping here on this photo. Um, no reason to get some foreground that is not really helping. And this tree probably doesn't need to be there. We're just kind of balancing these two trees. So if we have three, um, I think it uh, takes away from the scene a little bit. Um, also look at the histograms we have here. We have a good color range. Now I will say that on my 5D Mark III, I was doing high dynamic range shots. That means that I had a triple shot sequence. Hold the camera very still, and it was handheld. I didn't have time to get the tripod and everything out as we were heading down to Bernie Falls. But on the 5D Mark III, I was able to go ahead and take three shots, and it does try to sync them up if you don't move too much. And taking a look over to the library module, we can see that this was 1 60th of a second, not a slow one with the tripod. And it was an F5.6 at an ISO of 800. I guess I could have really dropped that ISO down some. Um, this 24 millimeter lens probably was the 16 to 35 millimeter lens on at that time, I believe. And this is what we came up with. And then um, finally, I guess I did make the sky a little bit bluer to try and make it representative of what it really was. If we took a look at the develop module, and went into the graduated neutral density filter. That's the M tool. I'll just go ahead and hit that. We can see that I see one on there. So if we click on it, we can see that I pulled down from the top and we um, brought down the exposure a little bit to try to make it a little bit more blue than it might otherwise be. So if we take a look at the before and after of this, we can get a little feel for it. And we can see that, yeah, some of the changes, if we take a look at it there, um, before, yeah, we did bring up the saturation some, the vibrance, and um, some of the highlights and shadows you can see were changed a little bit. Certainly the contrast was brought up also. So I think it makes a much more stunning photo, and it was one of those that, as we'll see later, if you're able to go ahead and have enough time to set it up on a tripod and get some uh, graduated neutral density filter, not in post-production, but put it in the front of your lens, you can bypass some of these steps. But you don't always have time, and we'll have more on that later. So that gives us a good feel. And if we take a look by zooming in a little bit there, uh, we can see we have some fairly good detail. It's not very bright there, but certainly does justice to be able to take a look and see some of the things that are in the photo if this was going to be an enlargement. So, okay, I think that does a pretty good job for showing our first photo. Well, okay, on this one, we'll call it the Golden Sky Mountain Peak. Now, again, notice that we have nice um, foreground crop. I'll go ahead and get that later, but uh, we can see that we have a lot of nice layers. So just barely catching this straw, some of the uh, weeds, hay that's in the foreground. And we have a second, third, fourth, kind of a fifth here, six, maybe six, seven layers here. So makes the shot a little bit more interesting if we can layer it that way. And um, we do have this golden hour is starting to come up on us now. So this wasn't so much that we had a view spot. We were kind of coming down the hill. But now it was like the sun was just at that right spot to just pull over alongside the road. 
And if we take a look at the photo and we go to the R crop tool, we can see that there is no reason for me to show all this area down here, not much going on with that, but just getting a pinch of it and then knocking off some of it. See, rather than get this hill, which is kind of like, well, where does that go next? Let's just get rid of it and make it look so that the photo looks like this. It stops right at the edge, looks very natural that way. So I think that works well with that type of a color crop. Now, by the way, this and most all of these here, I was using the high dynamic range uh, with um, taking three raw photos, click, click, click with plus and minus two on the automatic exposure setting. Um, some of your other cameras, the DSLRs, digital single lens reflex cameras, you can do that yourself and then put them all together in post, whereas the 5D Mark III, it allows this in-camera HDR composite, combining all three of them, so you don't have to do it in photometrics, uh, taking time after the fact. Um, the downside, I guess, is that we do have a JPEG, so you can't have quite the amount of range of tweaks that you could if you worked with the three original RAWs. But still, using the sliders that we've done over here, you can notice that we have some pluses and minuses. Most of them, this one bringing up the saturation a little bit since it was still somewhat dark, didn't have a neutral density filter in front of the camera on the lens, so we kind of made do with that again in post-production as we saw before. Okay, on our third photo, we have some pretty heavy colorization. We'll take a look at the settings. I think you can see it here, though. Look at the blue here. Pretty vivid goldens in the middle. And this bright orange, and the greens are certainly popping. So we'll talk about the settings in a little bit. But once again, we have quite a few layers working for us. We have the color contrast between the left and the right. And this nice little arc that kind of comes across here for the green trees in the foreground. I think the symmetry works pretty well on that shot. So taking a look at the photo in Lightroom, first off, let's take a look at the crop. That's the letter R, or you can always click it up here, and we can see that, um, yeah, it's no longer a 4 by 3 photo at all. This is about a 22 by 9 or 16 by 9 It looks more like the type of screen you see in a movie theater. So that's fine. You can certainly, when you have it printed or on a website page or whatever you might want to do, you can say, yeah, that's just fine, and have it either black or white to fit the framing and the matting that you would have around it. So as far as some of the other settings on it, uh, yeah, we've really cranked up the saturation all the way, 100%. And remember, it's still a little bit dark, so rather than to do some of the things by getting up on a tripod and having it a much slower shutter speed, getting a graduated neutral density for the top of it so that is normally going to let in too much light if you had a long shutter speed that this actually helps just to do it in post. And looking at our histogram, the colors look pretty nice, don't they, across the center. We don't have a lot of them at the ends, either the blacks or the white pixels. So this, I think, works out quite well. And how about the graduated neutral density filter? I think we can take a look over there. We'll just click on it this time. Remember, that is a letter M tool there. And yeah, there is one there. And you can see that it was drugged down from the top and it's much bluer than it might otherwise be. Let's just go ahead and take that away for a second. Wow, what a difference that made, didn't it? So I think it would be a much better photo representative of what we saw or what we thought we saw. And um, from a standpoint of the psychology of the photo, blues and oranges tend to be something that's more satisfying, more happy for the eyes. So greens also makes us think of water makes us think of safety, makes us think of life. So blues, oranges, more blues, greens, and a nice little white here in the middle. Our eyes are always drawn to white. It has most of the elements we would like in this photo. So I think that probably worked pretty well. On our fourth shot, sunrise over the mountain. Now I know what you're probably thinking. Where are these shots of Bernie Falls? Where's the waterfalls? Well, remember part of the story is just that, a story. So we wanna take some photos in route, especially if we have opportunities to capture memories along the way. That way it's not just a photo or all photos of the same thing, but the story of the journey, arriving at the destination and coming home again. So on this one here, at any rate, we're trying to get a picture of the sun as it's finally breaking through uh, over the mountaintop. And we can see some of the rays coming through over here and look at that lens rays coming right into the middle of our camera and that's we'll talk about in just a minute 
But um, it's certainly a challenging, although it is a dramatic shot. And we can see that the lens blades there that um, control the iris are f-stop there, giving us starbursts there of rays of light coming through. Now, looking at the photo, uh, I did use the spot removal tool. That's the letter Q. That's um, this fella up over here. And so what we're doing is um, I did some cloning, got some of these trees from elsewhere in the picture and moved them over because there was big red globs that were in these spots there before. And we didn't want those peering through. We can kind of take a look at them here. And we can see that this is um, no good when you got these big globs of light that are getting through. So by the magic of using tools like Photoshop, and Lightroom has some of these similar tools, which the uh, software creators were nice enough to give us over here. We're able to get rid of some of that lens flare by sneaking some trees over in the way. In fact, I think we use the adjustment tool. That's this one over here. I think that's the letter K. And we're able to do some more there. So if we were to take a look at this spot here, you can see that, yeah, there's a lot of red that's in there that has been changed. In fact, there were some over here also to go ahead and tone that down a little bit as well. So some of those tools can kind of come to our benefit when we do have problems with a shot that might not otherwise be quite as nice. And if we took a look at the original, well, I don't know. What do you think? I don't think that shot does too much for me. We've got these little hexagrams of what's um, the sun's bouncing off of our lens. And it's just a little bit drab where when we take a look at the final, looks much better, much more as what our eyes saw. And so, yeah, some of these things like this case, we cranked down the saturation and brought up the clarity. And you can see the contrast came up quite a bit, about looked like 52 here. And so some changes were made to improve on the picture. We have two more shots before we get to the fall. So bear with me. I'll try to go through this quickly. In fact, this shot just looks kind of more plain Jane, doesn't it? This is more like your average shot. But it's kind of nice to have some of these interdispersed in your album also as you're doing a photo show. You don't want them all to be bright colors, kind of um, heavily saturated. This one kind of is more like as the sun comes up, what you expect to see. In fact, we see that we have some tule fog kind of over here, a little bit of haze. And um, it's not quite as um, vibrant as we saw before. Looking at the settings, we haven't done quite as much with this. So this is more just your plain Jane photo. True, we did use the graduated filter and we did kind of brighten up the sky a little bit more than what it would normally have been. But I think that was more here again, representative of what we saw or what we thought we saw that day, what we want the picture to look like, not trying to make it dramatic, but just kind of as the sun comes up. This is what we expect to see. In fact, you can see here in this part of the photo, see how the sun is just starting to hit some of the steam coming off. On a bigger photo, this really kind of shows up nicely. So I think that's good to have some of it where you have some photos in your album that are kind of the more dramatic ones, and others are kind of more like, okay, this is the way you would expect to see it. Uh, we're not looking quite so strongly, quite so intensely, and yet still able to capture some of the nice deciduous colors in the autumn which this was at the end of October. Well, okay, I promise this photo will be the last one I'll show before we get on to Bernie Falls, but this is one that I entered in a professional photo club, and uh, my colleagues really liked it. Um, I forget what the name of it was called, and by the way, that is fairly important that you get a good name of your photo, so think of a good suggestive title, one that gets the right emotions that are supportive for the picture. Now we can really see the condensation coming off of the ground layer as the sun warms up on this shot. And as we were driving along, I just um, said, um, let's stop. This is a great place to take a picture. Grace and I got out our cameras and I was blessed to capture the vivid golden hour of the sunrise, as we can see here. Although looking at the saturation and vibrance in the setting, we can see that once again, I did crank them up a fair amount. But um, looking at the photo, I think you would have to agree is that we do have uh, a nice panoramic shot. So we certainly have not a four by three anymore. And um, we don't have a foreground problem here. It's nothing that's too distracting and it's, it's supportive. We've got the lake. In fact, we can see some kind of fog coming in on the lake and everything. and. Uh, it all works pretty well. We have a lot of layers. I was able to position my camera to where I was 
I think I supported my camera on the car, in fact, to get kind of a little bracing, no tripod here, but I fashioned myself so they would be right behind that tree. So I would get some sun coming through, but it wouldn't be too objectionable because it's getting bright this time of day. So if we were to take a look at it um, and do the crop tool, that R tool, we can see here was the original. Not great, was it? We had all this stuff down here in the beginning that we started with, and um, that would not make a very pretty photo, I don't think. So yes, this crop was pretty important, and I think that worked out pretty well for us there, doesn't it? So okay, going back to it then, um, I guess other things we can take a look at is, um, like I said, the settings. I don't know if we had any graduated neutral density that we did here. It doesn't look like it this time, so okay, didn't have to do much of a heavy hand with that at all. So. I think we were just fortunate that the sun was just right, got a lot of good things working for it. And about the only critical thing I heard from one of the photographers was this car that was over here. Maybe I would have wanted to remove the car, do a clone stamp and remove it. Well, guess what? It isn't a car at all. It turned out that it would be a house. So I suppose when you're being judged by your peers, don't always be too thin skinned and take it too seriously. Oh, I got to remove that car. It wasn't a car. It was a house and it should stay there. But sometimes when they look at them quickly in photo competition on a, um, a projector that's seen by 20, 30 people, you'll get some of those comments. So lesson learned, um, find the good things about your photo. Not that you have to be defensive of them, but um, sometimes you just have to smile, nod and say thank you for the critique. Okay, yes, finally we have Bernie Falls and um, what a great spot this was to take a photo. And as we can see that um, this has a lot of a, what we might call a creamy, dreamy look. It's not one that where the shutter speed was taken in, oh, um, less than a tenth of a second. This is a little bit longer one. Normally we're at 1 50th, 1 60th, 1 100th of a second. But we wanted to see that kind of a slow flow over time. So with the slow shutter speed, we're able to get the true effect. And what a beautiful falls it is. Um, we were out on the walk um, after about an hour or so. We got up to the upper part of the falls here. Uh, not quite this close, of course, where my I'm um, waving around a little mouse, but um, we could see the upper falls, and this is where it breaks through. And look at where the water comes through in literally hundreds of points by osmosis when it kind of comes through the falls. It's just a beautiful effect there. So um, what's the first thing you notice about this photo? Well, how about the framing? Look at this is a portrait. And yes, on something like this, you probably want a portrait. You could do some landscape and we had some also, but this is a portraiture shot. So on a, um, a web page, you know, it only is going to take up part of the page, isn't it? Because pages um, are in on the Internet or in a other format, in the landscape format. But here this is works well. So this is what we ended up with. Well, okay, let's take a look at some of the settings on the camera. So um, here we can see that we have the camera set with an exposure of a half of a second. We might have gone with one or two seconds, maybe even three seconds for a waterfall. Sometimes that works well. This was in a shutter priority. So the camera said, okay, I'll go with an F20. In fact, I had the ISO turned all the way down. So I was kind of at my limits there, wasn't I? If I wanted to have it where I would slow it down, I would have wanted to put a neutral density filter in front of my camera to go ahead and knock out some of the light. And then I could take my shutter speed up even more and make it more liquefied. But I think this worked pretty well for us. If we were to um, zoom in on part of the photo, I think we can see is that it really does kind of capture what we saw that day of these nice falls. And they finally come into the water and what a beautiful thing that is. So. We really enjoyed the falls of this picture, and um, we'll give a critique of our overall experience in a little bit, but um, I think the colors work well, and it's got some of the fall colors here. And yes, you probably want to take a look at the original crop. Um, there it is. That We just left it as is on that one there, so nothing happened there. Didn't have to adjust the sliders too much. Yes, the um, saturation has turned up a bit, and the contrast we can see is up a bit, but... Um, with this type of a crop, we didn't have contamination of the sun up at the top of the view, so it worked pretty well. Now, one other thing to say, when you get these slow shutter speeds, is how do you get your camera stabilized? This is important. And here's how we do it. There's where I was. Grace was taking some on her little monopod there, which worked okay for maybe a 20th, a 10th of a second. 
if she's real steady and she's leaning on this rock embankment, which I think she is, I set mine up to seven feet because I wanted to come down at an angle to be able to capture the water. And if you're where sheer angle is, you may not be able to get that. You may be running into some trees down here. So sometimes these more expensive, taller tripods, this is a seven footer, put your camera up there and then use a remote shutter. Otherwise it's hard to reach up beyond seven feet to where the shutter release is so that you can go ahead and take the picture. Sometimes you even have people in the way you can set this up. Hopefully no one's going to be tripping over it, but um, you can have it set up such that you can shoot over crowds as well. Another thing is that you don't, if possible, have one with a big center post that get that sneak up that extra foot or two because it's wobbly and it will have some vibration. It won't be quite as um, spectacular. It's going to have a focus problem when you go up more than about a five by seven shot. So, yep, some of these things, that's the price of admission. It gets a little more expensive for these nice tripods. But when you get these slower shutter speeds, it is going to be very helpful for you. Okay, let's mosey over to our last shot. And while we're doing it, I'll just go ahead and pop through some of these photos uh, since you've been so patient to take a look at uh, some of these others en route and see what some of the different shots of the falls look like. You'll remember some of these if you've seen part two of our video. We intersperse these with our video, but this gives you a shot of some portrait landscape shots with different types of effect, uh, looking for, you know, the best of the bunch in different angles, different types of perspectives different types of crops with subjects in them, some of the deciduous colors and different things going on. And here we start to see some sun's rays. And this is what I wanted to kind of point out on our last photo. There we go. So this works fairly well. And once again, you have to be looking for these lucky shots. The sun just happened to be breaking through the trees and giving some beautiful rays of light that were wafting through here. So we've got the lovely fall. We have a nice little vanishing point by the path. And remember, paths, they always signify is that safety, kind of a good way to get where there's not fear of the unknown. And um, as prehistoric men and women, this is what we were looking for. And water, another thing is that the water of life and the sun, green, there's things to eat around here, all good things. So subliminally, this shot has a lot going for it. We have some texture in the foreground with the rocks. They are wet rocks. No, I wouldn't want to walk on them. Be careful. But um, it looks just very interesting with the textures we have here in the foreground. And yes, we do have some fall colors, which we were lucky enough to capture at the end of October. Um, it was pretty cool in the morning. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, other than that, we were pretty doggone happy with the way this one turned out. So looking at the shot a little bit, I think that... Um, some things happened with the adjustment tool, the letter K. So if we were to click on this, aha, something's happened here, hasn't it? It looks like um, I have probably gone through and made that a little bit bluer, didn't I? See the exposure went down some on that to kind of change the kind of the coloration of it, which I thought it looked more that way. Anything else that was happening there? Um, I thought there was some things that happened with the other parts of the photo. Let's see if we can find out where they might be. I can't seem to come across them right now, but I'm sure there it is. What's going on there? Aha, look at that. You see those little red lines there? Yeah, I went with the adjustment tool and I brightened up those sun rays just a little bit, more like what I thought I saw that day. Not a lot, but just so that it amplifies where we can see that indeed the sun is coming through and look at that. So when you're looking at the picture, your eyes can't help go, but things that are bright colored are bright lights. And so we can see that indeed the sun is coming through to uh, blue waters. And um, it adds, I think, to the interest and the enjoyment of the picture. Now, sure, wouldn't it have been nice to go ahead and get a uh, like a natural neutral density filter rather than doing it in post? If we were to take a look at the graduated ND, sure, yeah, we did quite a bit there to go ahead and make that where it looked a little bit more pleasant. Could have done that more naturally by having a neutral density filter, but I don't think I would have had time to get the tripod out, to get the setup, the sun's coming through, put on a polarizer, maybe a neutral density filter, yada, yada, yada. 
you get the point. Sometimes we got to be ready to take that picture and capture it as best as we can. And then we use our friend Lightroom or whatever tool in post, and we try to make it the photo that we're looking for. Okay? Have you been to California? Seen the sights and people there? Walked the streets of sleepy sea towns? Tasted salty ocean air? 